You can call me Jonah. A few years ago, I began writing a book about the day the world ended. That is to say, a book about the day the first atom bomb was dropped. Inevitably, my research for the book brought me to Felix Huneker, the father of the atom bomb. Because he had died some years ago, I decided to send a letter to his family. He had two sons and a daughter. I didn't know it then, for I was no Baconanist, but they were a part of my caress. That is, they were all connected to me inextricably. His daughter, Angela, ran the household because Felix's wife had died right after the second son was born. She was the oldest and didn't write me back. Frank didn't write me back either, but I couldn't be too peeved as no one had seen him in years. Only knew the midget of a youngest son had mailed me. He told me of his strange and distant father. After receiving this mail, I traveled to the lab where Felix used to work, and one of the big wigs who had worked with Felix told me all about his obsessive nature. He also told me about the last thing Felix had tried to invent a type of ice that could turn mud rock solid by freezing the water in it into ice with a freezing point of 114 degrees Fahrenheit. Ice 9. After this, I was sent to the island of San Lorenzo to interview with a famous doctor philanthropist who lived there and brought medicine to the uncivilized island. As luck would have it, as I would have then described it, as any good Baconanist knows that luck had no hand in it, the two Hunnikers were on the flight with me. I asked them as to why they were going to San Lorenzo and they told me that Frank was being married to Mona Manzano of San Lorenzo. It was the first news they had heard of him in years and it was exciting. Mona was known to be the most beautiful maiden in all of San Lorenzo and served as their embodiment of sexuality. I was jealous. The first time I had laid my eyes on a photograph of Mona, I was smitten. On the flight, I read of San Lorenzo and for the first time heard of Baconan. He was an ex-American military man who arrived on the island with a friend in the 1920s and took it over. His friend became the government of the island and he became the religious leader. Baconan had his friend outlaw him so that the people who followed him devoutly would not attempt to overthrow the government. They would be too busy for that. We arrived at the island and met its current leader, Papa Manzano, the adopted father of Mona. He welcomed us but collapsed due to the illness that was consuming him and was worsening, and he named Frank the next president of San Lorenzo. I was later summoned to the home of Frank Hunnaker, where he invited me to become the next president of San Lorenzo. I was reluctant at first, but eventually gave in to Frank's request when he told me that I would have to marry Mona. Before the next part, it is important to inform you that Ice Nine was no fantasy. The day he died, Felix Hunnaker created Ice Nine, and the remaining amount was divided up by his children after his death. Over time, they had given away all their Ice Nine to get further in life, however. It helped Newt find a girlfriend. It helped Angela marry and helped Frank get his own right hand position to Papa Manzano. The next day we attended a military celebration of San Lorenzo and we were summoned to Papa Manzano's room frantically in the middle of the celebration. We entered and saw him contorted and frozen. He had killed himself with the ice nine that Frank had given him. Suddenly one of San Lorenzo's air force that was part of the celebration misdropped one of its bomb and hit the palace causing Papa Manzano to slide out of the palace into the ocean, turning it entirely to Ice Nine. I grabbed Mona and leapt into Papa's bunker. There she showed me the ways of Baconan, and I became the wise man I am today. After some days, we left the shelter, and as we walked, Mona killed herself with Ice Nine. I was left alone until I found Frank and Newt Hunnaker. They had survived, and we lived in Frank's island home for many months. This is when I wrote this book. Finally, I decided my time on Earth was up. I left the house with Newt, contemplating what my final action should be. Suddenly, we saw an old black man musing on the side of the road. It was Baconan. I posed my question to him, and he said that he would go to the highest peak in San Lorenzo with a history book of all of human stupidity, and he would eat some ice nine while thumbing his nose to God.